Hello everyone, welcome to day 27th of March Lead Code Challenge and today's question is palindromic substring. In this question, you are given a string S and your task is to count the number of palindromic substrings in that string. Remember, the question says palindromic substrings, not subsequence. Also, the definition of palindromic string is a string which when once read in the forward or backward directions appears to be same. So, let's try a few examples here. We are given A, B, C and there are three palindromic strings that are possible A, B and C. Hence, answer is 3. If we have triple A as a string, then six such strings are possible. Single A for the first index, second one and third one. And then this A, A, A here, then A, A here and then triple A as a complete string together. So without much ado, let's look at the pre presentation that I have created for this and let me just start the slideshow and let me just take a pen here. Awesome. And let's discuss what is a palindromic string. For those who don't, are not aware of it, it's a sequence that reads the same backwards or forward. Uh, in, in, in Malayalam is one of the English, uh, one of the Indian language and it is a palindromic string. If you, if you read it from the backward or forward direction, in both ways, it is read the same. Similarly, ABA, I have taken few more examples, ABA, ABA again. So if you start from this direction or this direction, it reads the same. Then we have ABC, BA, it's also palindromic string of length 5. So let's assume you are reading this question for the first time. What is your thought process about this question and you are not aware of any of the pre-concepts like dynamic programming or any other concept. You just try and evaluate the question. What does the question say? So we need to count all the substrings that are palindromic in nature. So the first th approach that comes to my mind when I read this question is to generate all substrings of a string and check whether each string is palindromic in nature or not. So uh, let's talk about how can we check whether a string is palindromic in nature or uh, is, in, is, pal is palindromic in nature or not. You can iterate over the string starting from, you can take two pointers, start and end, and you can keep on comparing them till the time they are equal. And as soon as we find them as unequal and they are not at the same index, you break it because it won't be a palindromic string. For example, A matches with A, this A, and then you move, increase the start counter, decrease the end counter then again it matches and at this position both of them are at the same index and hold the same value so you bought the process and we are for sure uh, given that this is a palindromic string. Now back to the question. How can you generate all substring of a string? You can take again take two for loops one starting here and other uh, again starting from here so for each uh, using two for loops, you can generate all substrings of a given string and uh, one would point to the start index and other would point to the end index of the given substring. And for each substring, you can check whether it's palindromic or not and uh, uh, maintain a count variable. If uh, the substring happens to be palindromic one, you increment that count and update your answer. And once you iterate over all the substrings possible, uh, the count would be, would hold your answer. So let's talk about the time complexity of this approach. So the time complexity of this approach would be order of n cube because you will be generating all palindromic substrings in order of n square and you will check whether each string is palindromic in nature or not in order of n. So the total time complexity increases to order of n cube. Now the interviewer will say, can you improvise on this? The answer is yes. How? Let's see. So I have taken a different example than what was specified in the question. The string is A, B, A, B, A. And let's assume for, for a second that we want to count all the palindromic substring where this index happens to be the midpoint. So let's try this up. A itself is a, a palindromic substring. So we will keep, keep two pointers, start and end. And both of them will point to the same index, which is 2 right now. And we will maintain a count variable. And since these are equal, 
uh, the, the character at both these indexes is equal, we'll increment that count, we got one. And as soon as we do that, we will decrease S and increase E. So E gets increased to this position and S gets in decreased to this position. So now S points here and E points here. And again, we will compare that whether the character at S and E are equal. If they happen to be equal, we'll increment that count. Otherwise, we'll avoid the process. So one string is A, other string is B, A, B. And the count gets incremented to 2. And we'll do the same, same thing because they're still equal. And S goes here, E goes here. And again, we'll check whether the characters are equal or not. The character happens to be equal. So again, we'll increment the count and we'll, let me just state the string again. So we, so far we got three as our number, three as a count with a, this a, the second index as the midpoint, you can generate three such strings. And what we are going to do for each index, we will check the number of substrings possible, which are palindromic in nature. So we did it for this index. Let's try this up for all the indexes. So let's assume we are at this index and uh, we will have two pointers again, S and E. And since it is equal, we'll increment the count. So count get incremented to four and the string happens to be one and you'll increment E and decrement S. So S goes out of the boundaries the process aborts. Let's move on to the next string. S and E points to this position and this happens to be equal. So the character is B. You increment the count, it, it becomes 5 and you reduce S and increment E. So S goes here, E goes here and this happens to be a palindromic substring because A, B, A is a palindrome. These two characters are equal and um, we'll increment the count. So the next string that we got is A, B, A. Let me just clear this up a little. And let's continue the process. So right now our S is pointing here and E is pointing here. And let me just take a pen again. So S points here, E points here. And let's continue the process. We decrement, uh, we increment E and decrement S. It goes out of boundary, about the process. And let's uh, do it for the next index. Uh, for two, we have already done. This was the answer and the count is already updated. Uh, so we'll ignore it. And then move to the next index B. And S points here. Uh, e points here. So we will again increment this because it happens to be the single character. So this gets 7 and we will reduce S. So S points here, increment E, E points here and this happens to be equal. This character and this character happens to be equal. We will update the count. So count becomes 8 and uh, we get another string A, B, A and let's continue the process. E goes out of index, abort the process and the last index that is left is this one. So we'll start from here, S points here, E points here, increment the count since it happens to be equal. So we get 9 and we increment E and decrement S. This goes out of boundaries, abort the process. So the total number of palindromic substrings that, that were possible is 9 in this case. So for each index, we will calculate the number of palindromic substrings that are possible with the current index being the midpoint of those palindromic substrings and the complexity for this would be order of n square. Also, I, I forgot to tell you an important thing here. Let me just raise the pen and let's assume for a second that the string was something like this. The string is A, B, B 
and A. So in the previous example, all the strup strings that we generated at palindromic happened to be of odd length. And let's just take a case where the substring is of even length. So let's, if we go with this approach and we have to compare this index, the starting should be from this index plus this index. So S and E should point to this rather than uh, the same index because then only we'll be able to make that count appropriate. So we need to take two cases wherein we are starting from this same index, S and E are starting from the same index and S and E are separated by a difference of one uh, for the start operation of checking the palindromic substring because then only you'll be able to increment the count appropriately. So let's take this case and here if you start from this index as S and this index as E. So this becomes one palindromic substring and then you again continue the same process S goes here and E goes here. If you're slightly confused with what I said right now, don't worry, I'll explain it in the coding part. Moving on to the coding part. So let's start the code and let's maintain the total count as a variable, initialize it to zero. And let's start the iteration integer i equals to zero i is less than s dot length i plus plus and let's update the total count assuming that the current index happens to be the midpoint of all palindromic substrings we'll define a helper method for it get count of palindromic substrings starting at index i and ending at index i for the basic case and we need to pass the string as well and let's write that method private integer so this is the start one and this is the end one for odd length both of them would be equal and next we'll have the string and let's define a variable t count equals to zero while start is greater than equal to zero and end is less than s dot length and s dot char at start equals equals to s dot char at end if that is the case you will continue doing it and you'll increment you'll decrement start and increment end and you'll increment your total count variable because this was a palindromic substring as many times as this loop runs we'll we'll get the total count and total count gets updated and we simply return back the total count and in the end we return the total count from here across all the indexes we perform the same operation across all the indexes apart from this we will need to take care of another case where this the start is i however the end is i plus one for the even length palindromic substrings a b b a and this would take care of a b a so let's try and submit this looks good and let's try accepted what would be the time complexity of this approach the time complexity would be order of n into order of n again because there would be cases where uh, the string goes till the extreme end so this loop runs for order of n times and this again runs for order of n times so the total complexity is tc happens to be twice of order of n square twice because we are doing it two times one for even lengths and one for odd lengths and what we are space complexity space complexity is order of one hope you understood this logic this is an important concept how we are tackling the even lengths and odd lengths together thanks for watching it hope you enjoyed it